Atlanta Wet Fly here from Ray Bergman's book, Trout. And this is the Liberty. You know nothing about the history of this fly. I chose it simply because of its patriotic nature. With the 4th of July coming up, I wanted to do something that was patriotic, obviously, and wish everybody a happy 4th of July. Like I said, I don't know anything about the history of it. It's a simple wet fly. The, uh, the tail and the wing are both made from duck on this one. It's a little bit smaller size than I normally tie. I'm not really planning on fishing any of these. Again, I just wanted to tie something up that was kind of patriotic. So, happy 4th of July to everybody, and that's the Liberty. I'll get started tying. start the Liberty by placing my hook on the vise. And this is a must have 33.99 in a size six. This is your typical traditional wet fly hook. Actually, I think that is a size eight. Debarb the hook. The thread, because of the light blue floss body, I'm gonna start with a Danville six aught in white. I've already waxed the thread. So I'll attach the thread about an eye length behind the eye of the hook and I will run it down the length of the hook to just past. Actually, I'll go down almost the full length of the body because there is no tip on this. Liberty starts out with a blue tail. I'm using some blue duck. Cut out my left and right slips. I want to make certain I have the tips of those nice and even. I'll double check the width. And then I want to tie those in about a shank length long. Make certain I have it tied down the full length of the body. Secure that in. I'll trim this end the length of the body. The rib on the Liberty is a gold tinsel. I'm using a Danville size 1618 silver and gold tinsel. I'll attach that with the silver side out. I like to bring it around over to my side right underneath the hook and I'll pull that back so that the end of that is the length of the body. One wrap to help secure that and then I'll tie in the body. The body is a light blue, pale blue I think is what the original recipe called for. Floss, I'm using a Danville four strand rayon in a pale blue color. I'll bring that around to my side of the hook, pulling that back so that the ends are just inside the body. Then I will start wrapping that forward, getting a nice smooth underbody all along the hook shank as I bind in those materials, advancing my thread forward to be able to tie in the body and the rib.
might have noticed there, one right before or right as I started to wrap on the floss body. I double check the tail there. Sometimes when you're wrapping in that thread for the underbody and the floss, the torque and the pressure of wrapping all of that in can pull the underbody off to the side of the hook, which means the tail would not be sitting right up on top of the hook. It actually would get canted over to the side. So I just double check that to begin with so that I know that it does not get moved. And I keep an eye on that as I'm wrapping those materials in. Second thing is, you'll notice that I frayed the floss a little bit. My fingers are a little bit rough today. And that's why I was fraying that floss just a little bit there. Now with the body in, I will change over to my finishing thread. I'm going to use a black 6.0 Danville. I've already got some wax on this as well. I'm going to wrap back maybe about half an eye length or so to trim off the white and the black. <clears throat> then I'll continue to wrap back a little bit further where I'm going to tie in the throat and the wing, usually about an eye length behind the eye of the hook. The throat is just white hackle. I'm going to use a white schloppen for this. Some of the white, even when it's bleached, it isn't a bright white, so you might want to keep an eye on that. For this, I'd like to have a, a much brighter white. I'm going to get slips off of my slop and hackle, a left and a right. Set those up underneath the hook so that the tips are about halfway between the point and the bend of the hook. And I'll wrap that in two or three wraps to secure that. And trim away the excess. Throat's going to be a little bit more difficult for some people. Just take your time with it. Now I'm going to wrap this in, getting all those butt ends secured and smoothing that off for my wing. The wing on the Liberty is just some red quill or scarlet, what it calls for. I'm going to use some duck on this because this is a size 8 hook. One other thing that I did not mention earlier, because this is a size 8 hook for that rayon floss, I only used three of the four strands simply because of the size hook. You could use four. It'd be a little bit bulkier, but... I just wanted to keep it a little bit thinner, so I just used three of those strands. I'll clip out my left and right of the scarlet duck. Again, making certain that I have those tips even first. I get those evened up and then I'll double check my width. I have the one on my side's a little wider and both of them are actually a little bit wider than I care for. So I will reach in and peel out some from both sides and that will also even it up so they're both the same width. Placing that on top, I want the tips to go about halfway down the tail. The pinch and loop. I'll secure that in and another one just to make certain it's secured. I'll wrap in four or five wraps just to make certain it's in place and secured. That looks good. Trim away the excess. 
bring my thread down behind the eye of the hook, working my way backwards. I will now form the head of the fly, securing all those butt ends in, covering them up, getting it nice and uniform all the way back to where it needs to be tied in. Double check. I've got everything covered up. Now I'll flatten my thread out. And I'll put in a eight or nine turn whip finish. That will finish off the thread. Put a little half a drop of head cement on both sides of the head. That will soak down into those threads. In a moment, I'll come back, put a couple coats of black lacquer on that to finish off the polish on our Liberty. Now, if this is a fishing fly, you certainly don't have to fuss with the wings here. But if this is something you're going to frame or you want to give to somebody, then when you mount that, you would want those wings to be in a little bit more of an upright position like this. You just look a little bit nicer. So there's the Liberty. Again, I know nothing about the history of this fly other than in perusing through Ray Bergman's book, Trout. I ran across it and I thought I wanted this year for the 4th of July to do a little something more patriotic. Probably we'll even get something Christmassy out for the holidays and something maybe even Thanksgiving-y. Is that a word? For Thanksgiving. But anyway, that's the Liberty. Thanks for watching today. Thanks for joining me at Device today. I hope you learned at least a new pattern, if not a new technique, maybe a tip or trick here and there. If you have any questions about this fly or any of the techniques used in constructing this pattern, please leave them in the comments section down below. If you go to the trouble to ask a question, I'll go to the trouble to answer it. If you'd like to help Dressed Irons, please share this video with your friends and anybody you think that might enjoy this pattern. Until next time, remember, it's fly tying. If you're not having fun, then you're doing it wrong.